Hi folks, it's Guillotine, and today I'm trying something new. Anyone who follows gaming news has seen there's been a lot of drama and backlash surrounding a bunch of video game titles. NBA 2K18, Middle Earth Shadow of War, Forza 7, and the biggest punching bag of them all, EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2. These games have all been trying their hand at utilizing microtransactions, and from what I have observed, they are all doing something wrong. Now, I'm not particularly hardline against microtransactions in totality. How can I? I have over 4,000 hours in Team Fortress 2, a game that monetizes almost entirely through microtransactions. But many companies seem to be pushing the boundaries of ethics and good taste, so I'm throwing my hat in the ring and giving my take on what rules companies should follow when considering microtransactions in their games. Maybe this can help someone not mess up in the future. So without further ado, here are... 10 Commandments for Microtransactions 1. Have a long-term plan of support for the game. Any game that intends to have microtransactions should have the plan to support the game for a minimum of five years. By support, I mean things ranging from bug fixes and game rebalancing up to additional content. Things like new maps, modes, story content, and weapons. I see some games where this is disregarded to a certain degree, mostly with games that receive annual or semi-annual installments where the new one is meant to eclipse the old one. If the game is not being actively supported from the developer side, then it should not have a hand outstretched asking for more money. 2. Don't charge for DLC if microtransactions are included. If a game is actively being supported with microtransactions, then that should be covering the cost of the new content. I believe in a pick-two system for games that are being supported. This means that if you paid a premium price for the game and then paid for premium DLC, then microtransactions just come off as tacky and overreaching. Especially with the practice of some game publishers cutting content from the main game for the sake of DLC. Either microtransactions or premium DLC. Not both. Unless you've actually already switched the game to a free-to-play model. If you've done that, go nuts. 3. Do not tie progression or improved mechanics to microtransactions. Pay to win. Exploitative, discriminatory, and poorly designed. Any game where microtransactions get you straight up mechanical benefits are games that are outwardly exclusionary to anyone who doesn't want to fork up the green. The main reason that microtransactions mainly acquire cosmetic game items is because they are the things that make it so all players can still have fun and maintain a balanced play environment. And paying to unlock game content like additional but mechanically different characters in multiplayer does nothing but sour the mentality of the consumer. Don't do it. 4. If you are charging a premium price for the game, include the paid currency in the amount of the price paid for the game. This one seems simple and fairly straightforward, but I've never heard anyone touch on it. Say you buy a game for $60. In addition to the disc, bonus included DLC or whatever, if the game has microtransactions in it, it should have $60 worth of the premium currency that you'd otherwise have to pay for. That doesn't mean watering down the value of the currency either. $60 of anything should be a substantial amount of anything in games these days. 5. Do not wall off mechanical features that were provided free in previous games behind microtransactions. Alright Forza 7, I'm looking at you here. Nobody likes the idea of having something taken away. Even more so the idea of having to pay to get that thing back. Locking away things like difficulty modifiers in a racing game or conditional challenges to increase in-game rewards in most any other kind of game will win a developer no good will. It's basically a more subtle variant on pay to win, but you still need to put in the work. How does that make any sense? 6. Make it so players can earn the premium currency by playing the game at a reasonable rate or by random drops. This should also be straightforward. Never make a currency available only by microtransactions. By the same token, a gamer will put in a bit of effort to earn a reward. Just don't use that logic as a means to force a gamer into grinding to oblivion. I mean, 4,000 hours to unlock all content in Battlefront 2? Really? Hey, I earned all the mechanical content in one ten seven. Make it so players can get value back out of the game, either via a trade system or an in-game marketplace. Great, another straightforward guideline. However, this is also something that is prone to abuse or causing a game to suffer. Just look at the auction house from Diablo 3. But nevertheless, using Team Fortress 2 as an example, cause what else would I use? This game has an economy all its own, and players who put in the time and maybe a little money can actually earn far more than what they actually invest. And if they aren't feeling it anymore, they can list their inventory and make some money to put into something else. They get measurable value back. What a concept! 8. 
Do not change the price of microtransactions on the individual gamer's level. I saw this idea pop up not too long ago in a video by Jim Sterling. The idea of a company using psychology and monitoring your spending habits to try and get you to pay something at a specific time for a specific amount makes me feel genuinely uneasy. Companies already spend exorbitant amounts of time and money to advertise on the grand scale and to a degree on the individual level in my web browser. I don't want them trying to mentally manipulate me any more than they already do. Plus, I'm sure no gamer wants to find out they got charged more than other players for no good reason other than our company believed you'd pay, so we offered it. Blech. Nine. Make a game that is fun and will make players willing, not resigned or resentful, to pay for. Another point that should be very easy to understand. I find Team Fortress 2 fun. I find its monetization unintrusive. Given those two virtues, I have willingly parted with what I can only guess could be at the minimum a few hundred dollars over the years. Not because I felt forced to, because I wanted to. And even now, I feel I got my money's worth. 10. Loot boxes are gambling. Do not include them in games rated T or lower. This guideline should be the one that is quickest to the point. Given all the psychological ploys, Skinner box mechanics, and potential to exploit those with genuine gambling problems, there is no question in my mind that loot boxes are a form of gambling. This can be mediated by having the option to buy most, if not all, the loot box contents for a slightly higher price than the loot box itself. But I will conclude on this last point. If gambling is included in a game, then it should not be a feature made available to minors or those with excessive gambling compulsions. And any company willing to exploit either of those two facts needs to do some serious reassessment of its moral standards. Thanks for watching, folks. These were just a few of my ideas on how microtransactions could be kept bearable. If anyone has any ideas of their own, or has any counterpoints to any of the things I've said, let me know. I'd, I'd love, I'd genuinely love to take part in some civil discourse. Until next time, God bless all of you.